Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. Hi there, everybody. I'm Milan Jordan, and this is the MMA Daily Blitz, brought to you by FanStream Sports, powered by DSP Media. Hey, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you consume your podcast. You also check out our YouTube page, and you can follow me on Twitter at Milan Jordan. All right, let's get right to it. Last weekend, it was UFC 286 at the O2 Arena in London, England. A total of 15 fights on this card, time for the most ever on a UFC fight card. And the main event was for the welterweight championship as Leon Edwards defends his belt but for the first time against the man whom he beat for that title, Kamaru Usman. Uh, this is the third meeting between these two guys, splitting the first two meetings. Uh, in a rubber match in his home country, Edwards showed that last year's win over Usman was no fluke, which Edwards landed the head kick hurt around the world. Uh, in this matchup, Edwards landed leg kicks and body kicks throughout the fight. Uh, Usman, he did have some moments with some effective punches, but just couldn't really get into any kind of sustained rhythm. Uh, Edwards had a point taken away in the third round for a fence grab, uh, which I agree with. And you thought maybe that could prove costly, but when all was said and done, it was Leon Edwards defeating Kamaru Usman via majority decision, uh, 48-46 to 46 by two uh, judges' scorecards, 47-47 in the other. Uh, with the victory, Edwards improves to 21-3 and three with one no contest in his career and extends his unbeaten streak to 12 fights in a row, while Kamaru Usman uh, drops to 20-3 and three in his career, dropping back-to-back -back fights for the first time in his career. All right, so who's next for Leon Edwards now? Well, how about Colby Covington? Yeah, well, that's according to Dana White, who said post-fight that Covington is next in line for the title. Uh, this after Covington flew to the UK to serve as the backup fighter for the UFC 286 main event. Uh, Covington, he hasn't fought since uh, two, uh, UFC 272 last year when he earned, earned a unanimous decision win over Jorge Masvidal. Uh, after that win, that's when we saw Kobe Covington in the news because he was allegedly attacked by Masvidal during an incident outside a restaurant in Miami that led to Masvidal being arrested and Masvidal still facing charges from that incident. Uh, as for Kobe Covington, uh, he has remained on the sideline since then uh, and largely stayed out of the spotlight, spotlight until suddenly appearing to back up the UFC two main event this past Saturday. I mean, nobody knew it, so... You know, Friday at the weigh-ins, it's like, what's Kobe Covington doing here? Why is he Why is he weighing in? Who's he fighting? Oh, he's the backup. Okay, for the main event. So, because he did that, Dana White feels that he is uh, worthy and deserving of that title shot. Now, to a lot of us, uh, there may be some other worthy challengers uh, for Edwards to face, like Bilal Muhammad, who's on a nine-fight unbeaten streak, or perhaps the winner of Gilbert Burns and Jorge Masvidal at the next pay-per-view. Uh, Gilbert Burns, the top five fighter, certainly up there uh, for a title shot. Jorge Masvidal, while he hasn't won a lot of fights as of late, he's lost more than he's won recently. But there is history between he and Leon Edwards, member uh, Three Piece in a Soda from a few years back. Uh, so that would be intriguing. But Dana White, he's adamant that Colby Covington was lost in two previous undisputed title fights and has split his last five fights. We'll get a crack at Leon Edwards' championship belt next. As to when, well, well, who knows at this point. All right, the co-main event was a lightweight bout between Justin Gaethje and Rafael Fazib. And look, this was a violent fight. It was a great fight. Strikes were thrown by both fighters throughout uh, violently and with purpose. Uh, first two rounds were close. The judges were split on both rounds. Uh, but round, round three, they all agreed that uh, that belonged to Justin Gaethje. Uh, one judge even scored a 10-8 in the third round for Justin Gaethje, uh, who also had the lone takedown of the fight and the first of his MMA career in the waning seconds of the fight. Uh, Fazee was a bloody mess when all was said and done. Uh, both eyes were swollen, uh, and it's Justin Gaethje who wins by a majority decision in a fight that earned fight of the night honors. That's uh, the first time that Fazee uh, has lost when his fights, one of his fights went the distance. Elsewhere on the uh, main card, you had a welterweight fight uh, between Gunnar Nelson and Brian Barbarina. And, well, it was Nelson's grappling beating Barbarina's striking. Uh, Gunnar Nelson defeated 
Brian Barbarina uh, via armbar uh, at 451 of the very first round. Uh, this is Nelson's seventh submission victory, the most in UFC welterweight history. Uh, elsewhere in the UFC 286 main card, the women's strawweight division, 125-pound fight between Jennifer Maya and Casey O'Neill. Uh, this was all Jennifer Maya. She was in control throughout the fight uh, in handing uh, Casey O'Neill the first loss of her MMA career. She drops to 9-1, and one, while Jennifer Maya improves to 21-9. and nine. And then in the opening bout of the main card, it was a middleweight clash between Melvin, uh, excuse me, Marvin Vittori and Roman Delize. And well, Vittori threw punches and bunches. He outstruck Delize 106 to 71. And it was uh, Mel- Marvin Vittori winning by unanimous decision. Uh, two judges scoring at 29 28, a third scoring at 30 to 27 uh, for Vittori. It's his seventh win over his last nine fights and snaps. snaps Elise's four-fight winning streak. Uh, also during the UFC 286 pay-per-view on Saturday, it was announced that there was going to be another new member of the UFC Hall of Fame, none other than former middleweight champion Anderson Silva, as he was, he's named a member of the Hall of Fame's pioneer wing. Uh, Silva fought for 23 years, the record of 34-11, and 11, one no contest, including 21-8 and eight with one no contest in UFC and Pride, uh, notching victories over future UFC Hall of Famers Forrest Griffin, Stefan Bonner, uh, Dan Henderson, and Rich Franklin twice, uh, one getting the UFC middleweight championship and the other one defending it against uh, Rich Ace Franklin. Uh, uh, Anderson Silva also had wins over former UFC light heavyweight champion Vitor Belfort, uh, also UFC w- former UFC welterweight champ Carlos Newton, Former Strike Force welterweight champ Nate Marquardt, uh, former U- uh, WEC middleweight champ Chris Lieben, and also former WEC heavyweight champ James Irvin. Yeah, just a who's who uh, in his uh, long and storied MMA career. Uh, Anderson Silva, he's on a Mount Rushmore of MMA fighters, and now he'll be a UFC Hall of Famer. Uh, speaking of uh, at least one guy who's probably headed for the UFC Hall of Fame, perhaps the second. Uh, we know that Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler will fight later this year. Uh, the two were coaches in the just-completed filming of Season 31 of The Ultimate Fighter. It's going to air in May and throughout the summer. Uh, we don't know when they will fight, but some interesting options are on the table as to where they will fight. Uh, UFC President Dana White recently mentioned uh, they're looking at several different options, including AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, home of the Dallas Cowboys, a venue that They've tried to get into for years. Of course, Las Vegas is always in the mix uh, with T-Mobile Arena or even the home of the Raiders, Allegiant Stadium. Uh, The fight between McGregor and Chandler, uh, it's going to occur sometime after the Ultimate Fighter uh, airs when that season concludes on August 15th. Uh, Another potential delay to the bout is McGregor's status in the USADA drug testing pool. See, after his last fight in July of 2021, uh, in which McGregor suffered a, a broken leg against Dustin Poirier, uh, Conor McGregor removed himself from the USADA pool. A uh, decision he says was due to the medical recommendations associated with such an injury. Uh, McGregor recently said that he thinks two negative tests will requalify him for the competition. However, USADA has repeatedly said that McGregor will need to be in the testing pool for six months prior to his return to competition. So if you fast forward that here, what's what, March 21st? That would be in like late September or later in the year. That is, of course, unless the UFC makes an exception. Hmm, would the UFC make an exception for Conor McGregor? Hmm, I wonder. We'll see. But, you know, last week Dana White was asked if McGregor would receive such an exemption. Uh, UFC president yeah, kind of remained hush on the topic and said he doesn't want to be directly involved with the drug testing side of the promotion. Uh, he wanted to leave those questions for Jeff, uh, Jeff Nowitzki. Uh, Conor McGregor, he's 34 years old. He's uh, lost three of his last four fights uh, dating back to October 2018. Meanwhile, Michael Chandler, he's 36 years old. He's a former Bellator champion. Uh, he's also lost three of his last four, but uh, in the same time period that uh, Conor McGregor, since October eight, uh, October of 2018, Conor McGregor has fought four times, losing three. During that same time period, Michael Chandler has fought nine times uh, during that time period. All right, the UFC is back at it this weekend with a fight night card in San Antonio. The main card is going to be on ESPN. 
uh, at seven o'clock in the East. The main uh, the main event is going to be an explosive bantamweight clash between Marlon Chito Vera and Corey Sanhagen. Uh, the co-main event you got Holly Holm returning to the octagon. Uh, to take on Yana Santos. You got Sean Brady to take on Michael Pereira, and Andrea Lee will take on Macy Barber. So it should be a pretty good uh, UFC fight night card this weekend in San Antonio. All right, folks, that'll do it for this episode of the MMA Daily Blitz. As always, thank you for checking it out. This episode of the MMA Daily Blitz brought to you by Fanstream Sports, powered by DSP Media. By all means, like, share, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Milan Jordan. As always, thank you for checking out the MMA Daily Blitz. I am Milan Jordan, and I will talk to you later.